As a waist length, kinky, coily, type 4 babe, I can honestly say I never truly enjoyed wash days. So hear me when I say this, these plaits have made wash days in life so much easier. I've had these in for a month now, 29 days to be exact, and I love it. But it's about that time to redo. I have hair trying to escape the braids, so it's causing hella frizz. I have new growth, which if I eyeball it, looks like it's about an inch. If not an inch, then maybe I'm thinking like three fourths of an inch. But this right here definitely looks like an inch. What do you guys think? Either way, I'm going to be doing a limb check at the end of the week. So you'll see that at the end of this video. But today we're going to be washing, deep conditioning, and redoing these plaits. Emphasis on redoing because baby, hubby said that they're looking like they're starting to lock and we can't have that. So oh, let's start. When I'm rocking these plaits, I wash them like I normally wash it without the braids, starting with wetting them and making sure it's thoroughly wet. This involves being under the shower for at least seven minutes. If it's not thoroughly wet, then it won't be thoroughly cleansed or thoroughly treated. Wetting our hair for a few minutes is not enough for you know, the product to rinse off and the cuticles to lift. If it doesn't lift, then the shampoo is not going to be able to effectively do its job and build up increases over time. So I'll wet my hair for about seven to 10 minutes with warm, hot water. Then I'll grab my shampoo. The cleanser I'm using is actually the Dr. Bonner's natural soap. This removes all of the products in one wash. I would say using this as my shampoo would be categorized as a clarifying shampoo. I really focus on my roots first because that's where all this stuff is, you know, dead skin, oils, sweat, bacteria, etc. This lathers so good and I love it. Once I get a good lather, then I'll go in with my scalp massager. I talked about this tool in a recent video where I share tips on how I was able to grow and retain waist length hair. And I mentioned how great this is. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it. It's really informative. So yeah, if you're on a hair growth journey, check it out. Might help you if you need some guidance. Now, scalp massaging is said to increase hair growth by increasing blood and nutrients to the scalp. I use mine every wash. It helps to lift dirt, dead skin, and other buildup that may occur on the scalp. Once I'm done with the scalp, then I move down to the braids. I like to do this squeezing motion to make sure the inside of the braids are in contact with the soap as well. If I don't properly wash off the product from the week before, then the next step won't be effective. I'll do this a few times, then I'll rinse it off doing the same motion, making sure that the soap that's in the braids is rinsed out properly. Now that my hair is squeaky clean, we'll move on to the black owned business of the week, TGIN, thank God it's natural. I'll be using a deep conditioner and leave conditioner from this brand. Right after I shampoo, I go straight in with my deep conditioner. I can't even remember the last time I used regular conditioner. Like it doesn't penetrate deep enough for my hair type or in general, to be honest. Conditioner works on the surface level. Deep conditioners work to moisturize beyond the cuticle. So I skip the middleman and go straight for the stronger stuff. Which is why it's important to thoroughly wash because we want to make sure that the deep conditioner can do its job. If there's a layer of products or buildup that's causing a barrier preventing access to the cuticles, it won't be treated or moisturized properly. It'll just be sitting on our hair. But y'all, do y'all see that new growth? I cannot wait to see how much I've retained this month. Now, my braids are small enough for the deep conditioner to penetrate each strand. I've talked about how knowing my hair porosity has helped me retain length because I'm able to choose the best treatments. I have medium porosity hair. My cuticles are slightly raised, so if my hair is healthy overall. The only thing I really need to focus on is hydration over protein. Uh, the honey in this deep conditioner is perfect for my hair type. Heat, no matter the hair porosity, but especially low porosity should be added. The product says to sit under the dryer for 10 to 15 minutes or sit 35 minutes to an hour. I'll be using my body heat. So the way I wrap my hair is close to my scalp and the saran wrap keeps the heat trapped. Say that five times. He opens up the cuticle to allow for deeper penetration of the deep conditioner. The honey is a humectant and humectants draw in moisture. And that's what I need. As much moisture as I can get. Now I did fall asleep. And uh, so this actually set for four hours. I sometimes sleep in it overnight. Personally, I haven't had any issues doing that. Everybody is different. So keep that in mind. I rinse the deep conditioner out using slightly cold water. As cold as I can withstand. No pun intended, but I can't stand cold showers even though I know there's like mad benefits to bathing in cold water. I mean, I'll do it, but I'm not going to like it. I'm just rinsing my hair out in cold water, doing the same method as before. When it comes to cold water, rinsing it out for the hair, 
it traps the moisture in and it leaves the hair extra shiny. So that's a tip. Going in with my leave-in conditioner, the TGIN Green Tea Super Moist Leave-in Conditioner. This stuff is so good. It's lightweight, good for any hair type, but best for mine. I go into details about it more in my hair growth and retention video, but I have fine hair and medium porosity. So this is perfect for my hair type. It's lightweight, so it doesn't weigh my fine hair down, yet it's very moisturizing. I've been applying my leave-in conditioner while in the shower for well now i find it absorbs better than waiting till i'm out the shower to apply it now this is the only product that i use if i add oil then i add it only to the ends i use a very good amount probably like four pumps per section if i divide it into four i'll run the product down my braids to help with absorption and to help with the drying process i wrap a microfiber towel to soak up the excess water while i shower i wash my braids weekly and when i do dry them i like to air dry typically it takes all day but today i'm doing something a little different so instead of taking all of the plaits out and then redoing it, I just decided to wash my hair with the plaques in, deep condition, moisturize, and just redo them one by one. I'll probably redo the entire style, like take everything out and rewash and everything, probably for a month mark because I already see this is going to be a lot easier. I'm actually gonna speed this up because I take my time with doing this. Like I said, I have fine hair and characteristics of fine hair is that it's fragile, easy to break, tangle, and knot. I'm gently using a rat tail comb to unravel the ends because my fingers can't fit in between them tiny little braids. And then I'll use my fingers to unravel the rest, finger detangling and removing shed hair. Notice I said shed hair, no breakage. Notice also how slow I'm going and how gentle I'm being with removing the shed hair. This is how much hair came out of one plait. I'd say not bad given that this was for a month and hair sheds 50 to 100 times a day. But wait until y'all see how much came out after I finished the entire head. I applied a little bit more conditioner and then I went in and plaited it back up. As you can see, this is real time. So it's, yeah, it's slow. What people don't realize is, <laughs> I guess the longer the hair, the longer you have to do something. I've been plaiting this for how long now? Two minutes. It's also because it's kind of small, so... Yeah, here's protective styling, yay. Now all I have to do is the rest of my head. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I went on to do the rest of my head. I'm not looking forward to taking them out in three months, but for right now, this is very convenient. I work from home, so I was able to complete this while working. It took me nine hours to do half of my head and notice the difference between the old plaits and the redone plaits. This is amazing. The only thing is because they're pretty much dry, I had to use a lot of conditioner. This is pretty much how I take down my protective style anyways. Here's a tip. To prevent breakage from taking out braids, after protective style, do not use water. Instead, use conditioner. Run a good conditioner with slip down the braids or twists or plaits or whatever you're you know, wearing. Focus much on the ends. It smooths the hair to make it easier for takedown. Also, it helps with finger detangling. So yeah, trust me when I say this, use conditioner, do not use water. I love it when I take down a protective style and I can actually see that my hair is longer. By how much, I suppose we'll see later. It was late y'all and I was just ready to be done, but I knew I wasn't gonna have time the next day. So I pushed through. To be honest, I was really tempted because if you look at the front and the middle of my head, like you can't tell, you cannot tell that it's not fully done but i did decide to go on tiktok live to finish the back also follow me on tiktok i share healthy hair tips and hair updates there too but yeah this is how much hair i shed for a month i know it looks big but with my hair being long and how long it's been this is actually really good this is my hair the next morning and they look so amazing looks so healthy y'all my ends look so bouncy and so cute nutrition is an important factor for healthy hair growth i talked about this in detail in the growth and retention tip video so if you want to look at that you can but essentially you want to make sure that your body is getting enough nutrients so that way it feeds the body and then it also has enough for uh the hair growth process your body's always going to trump the hair so just keep that in mind I thought I'd share what I ate one morning. I feel like someone's going to judge me because what kind of breakfast is this? But let me explain. So first and foremost, avocado. Yum. Duh. It has good fats. And according to my blood work, I need more of it. I have some mixed nuts for my protein and also for my omegas. It's really good for promoting healthy hair growth. I'm also taking my Mary Roots Liquid Morning Multivitamin plus hair growth with my meal. It helps for better absorption. It's a complete vitamin to help me maintain my vitamin levels and promote hair growth. 
I've noticed some differences myself and I showed you in a recent short. So if you want to try it, I do have a code for that. And yeah, I try to eat as much fruits and veggies as I possibly can throughout the week. I have a salad that I made. It's it has olives, avocados, so butternut good. squash, pesto, chickpeas, heavy on the baked mushrooms on top of spring mix. Oh, the salad was amazing, y'all. Throughout the week, I'll also incorporate a hair growth tea. So it has fenugreek, rosemary, butterfly pea flower, and cloves. I'm not going to share this specific recipe with you because it's not good at all. Like, it's so strong. So if you want me to share with you a drinkable tea, comment down below. But rest assured, I have a bitter tongue. I drink my teas without sugar, so... I did drink this one specifically. Um, so yeah, if you want me to share a drinkable tea, let me know. I also like to incorporate scalp massages throughout the week. I have been trying to strive for three to five times throughout the week. I'm not consistent yet, but we're getting there. I have ran out of my oil, so I'm just making my concoction. Jamaican black castor oil, a few drops of tea tree oil, I add some rosemary oil. Rosemary is really good to help promote growth and a healthy scalp. I also am adding some clove oil. I don't see people put rose hip in their oils. Like this is really good for a healthy scalp. It keeps it nice and hydrated. Olive oil is another carrier oil that I like to use. <laughs> a lot of these oils are on its last leg. I need to do inventory and go shopping for some more, but... This is how I typically make my oils. It does change from time to time as far as like the things that I put in. You'll notice that I also have some fenugreek seeds in there as well. Even though I'm not as consistent as I want to be, I look forward to these scalp massages. Like they feel so good on my scalp. Like it just relaxes me. The oil by itself feels amazing. It's very, it's like a cooling sensation. I just drag some of the oil using the dropper from the bottle across my parting spaces. I do the front first and then I massage that in. After I massage it in on the front, then I move into the back and do the same thing. I can easily massage my head for 20, sometimes even 30 minutes. I've done it a whole hour before. I just sit there and just like massage my scalp, watching TV, watching a movie. Like it's just, it's a vibe. It's, it's what I consider self-care. It relaxes me. I find that when I do scalp massages, I sleep better at night. Um, I mean, yes, it's promoting hair growth. It's promoting blood flow to the scalp. But just like the massages alone is so relaxing. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. I just, I just sit there and just massage my scalp. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for, let lip check. Okay, so why I didn't measure my hair the day I put these plaits in is beyond me. This is a literal week later. I just washed my braids and so I was like, you know what? I wonder how long my hair is. So I did a lip check. So schedule wise, whenever I do my lip check, it's going to be a week after I redo my braids just to keep it consistent. Fast forward a few weeks into the future today, literally as I'm doing this voiceover, it's February the 16th. And I am excited to share my results. I told you guys that it looked like it was about an inch, probably like three fourths of an inch, if anything. Y'all, how about I was right? How about I was right? I was so shocked. Can y'all see that? That is an inch right there. That's just about an inch. What did y'all say that? Like that's a little past the line that I put. That's okay. I kept re-measuring it just for consistency. It is, my hair is a little longer than the line that I put there. So I have like another line, but yeah. So let me show you guys the actual that measurements. That is almost an inch. It's not a full inch. Yeah, so that's like, my hair was like reaching right here. So yeah, that's like almost an inch. I'm not supposed to say an inch. 